Right, I'm telling you. My dogs are barking today. But man, my dogs are barking. Well, welcome back into the My Dogs Are Barking podcast. I'm your host, Landon Tucker, and uh, we have some breaking news that is official. Jeff Lebby has agreed to become the new head coach at Mississippi State in a five-year deal for the Bulldogs. This is something that is, that's been talked about uh, over the weekend to try to see who Mississippi State was going to hire. Jeff Lebby's name has uh, been around uh, in, in circles in terms of talks of Mississippi State. Uh, and so now it is official. The Oklahoma offensive coordinator is coming to Starkville. Uh, and I, I we're going to kind of look at a couple of the reasons uh, uh, why this is a good hire for Mississippi State. And then maybe some reasons why this is a risky hire. With all, um, I mean, really, unless you're hiring, uh, you know, Nick Saban to be your head coach or Kirby Smart today, there's always risk involved. And so uh, when you look at Mississippi State's situation, they needed someone with some offensive juice specifically. Mississippi State, uh, I mean, forever, their identity has been uh, defense is going to win us a game. Uh, defense is going to be the, the thing that uh, allows us to prevail. There's never really been a great offense in Starkville. In, in then when Dan Mullen kind of came into uh, the fray in 2009, the offense started to have a little bit more of an identity. Uh, but even then, the defense is what Mississippi State has been known for. It's what the the pro bowlers in the NFL are for. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, Fletcher Cox, Montez Sweat, Darius Slay. Uh, the list goes on and on of defensive players, but the offensive side of the ball has not been the the main forte for Mississippi State. So in this this brand of football that we've seen, especially when Mike Leach came in, we saw some offense, um, but the defense is what won a lot of games. This season, it seemed as if the defense, uh, while they had some very bad moments, overall held some pretty good teams in check, but the offense couldn't produce more than three points or seven points or or even 10 points at times. Now, Mississippi State has a head coach in Jeff Lebby that's all about some offense. Uh, Jeff Lebby has been around uh, some great coaches, worked under Lane Kiffin, Josh Heupel, um, uh, and has kind of worked under that tree of uh, very brilliant minds. Um, and in a roundabout way, been is connected to Leach because Leach, you know, uh, Heupel came under that uh, on under that train, and, and he uh, Lebby certainly learned from him. So. Uh, they should expect offense. Looking at uh, Oklahoma, what he did there this season was impressive. Now, remember, Oklahoma has had a great offense forever. There's never been a time where they have, have had a terrible offense. This season was no different. Offensively, Oklahoma was remarkable. Uh, they finished fourth in scoring offense, seventh in total offense. But we have to remember who they're playing uh, whenever they're they're scoring all these points against teams, um, you do not find a team ranked in the top 50 in defense uh, outside of two, uh, and that is when they they play number 11 uh, number 11 in total defense SMU. They won 28 to 11, uh, and then they they played um, number 37 Texas. Uh, uh, Texas is number 37 overall in total defense this year, and uh, I believe that final score was. Oklahoma 38, what was it? Where did we finish out at? I think it's Oklahoma. Okay, yeah, o Oklahoma 34, Texas 30. So, they're e even against very good defense, they were able to score. But that, that cannot be discounted. Jeff Levy did some great things um, with with some very talented guys, but the, the competition wasn't great. Got to keep that in mind. It's Mississippi State's not going to come in and average that those kind of numbers, especially year one in the SEC. It's just defenses are, are, are a lot better. Um, kind of week to week from a week to week basis, and uh, so looking at those things was good. One of the the things we look at player stats, of course, there's still a game to go. But quarterback Dylan Gabriel threw for 3,600 yards for the Sooners. Drake Stoops had 880 yards receiving. I mentioned those two guys because they both have a COVID year remaining, and. Uh, specifically, Dylan Gabriel has been a name that has been uh, talked about at least, uh, suggested that it's possible he could follow Jeff Lebby to Mississippi State for his final year. Remember, 2018 was Dylan Gabriel's freshman year when he was at UCF where Jeff Lebby uh, was on the offensive staff there. So they've grown a lot together. And honestly, Oklahoma has an absolute star in, in the making in Jackson Arnold. So their, their future is kind of taken care of. And, and here are some of the reasons, and we're not going to spend forever on this today, but uh, a couple of the reasons why it makes sense for Mississippi State. I think immediately the offense, offensive identity 
is exciting. The offensive brand is exciting of throwing the ball down the field, of being quick, having tempo, having skill players, getting them the ball. Um, Mississippi State's brand of offense this year has been pretty boring. Um, but even during Mike Leach's time, it wasn't a very exciting offense. It was, I mean, it, it worked certainly in, in year three uh, under Mike Leach. But it was never very exciting. It was it was a, a you know a, a four yard curl on the first play of the game. Uh, it was checkdowns to running backs, and again they move the ball. And of course, Will Rogers' stats is, are remarkable. But it was never really anything that was very exciting. And the way I look at it is at a place like Mississippi State, if you're going to lose a game and you're not going to be Alabama, you're not going to be Georgia, you've got to at least be competitive and entertaining. I think immediately Mississippi State becomes interesting. And their offense becomes uh, certainly much more interesting than they have. And I think he is going to be able to use that for, for why this hire makes sense in part two. And that is, I think Jeff Levy is going to be able to get some players in the portal that otherwise would not have come to Mississippi State. Before Jeff Levy was hired, it, it appeared that some of the Bulldogs, uh, even though it was a rough year offensively, they did have some good players. Avion Thomas, uh, Tulu Griffin, of course, uh, even Creed Whittemore. But all three of those, I think it would not be out of the realm of, of – likelihood that those guys would have left at least two of the three and now it appears as if just based upon some of the things that the guys are already saying that there's some excitement you, in, even if they don't end up staying um, it does appear more likely they would stay and in, instead of having a defensive guy come in and that is good news already had had uh, uh, JJ Harrell um, uh, be interviewed and uh, by Ryan Young and mention how he's excited about the offense, how he likes the type of offense that Levy runs. Um, there's already been some different prospects reach out. So I, I think immediately the brand's more exciting. There's just no way around it. And even if you're to place at Mississippi State and you go seven and five next year or, you know, eight and five or, or whatever the case may be, there's a particular brand of football that's more exciting than, than it is at this given moment. I think those are things that make sense. And he knows a lot of people in the sport. Jeff Levy does. I think he's going to be able to bring together a staff that's interesting. Um, the, the last reason I'll say why I think this might work is really much more to do with the administration. It appears as if, based upon some of the things that Steve Robertson has reported, there's a lot more um, bought-in donors. So for NIL and for uh, all the support that a football team needs, it seems like this is going to be a hire that gets people more involved and uh, gets again brings the excitement level up, and when you do that, you have more people that are willing to go into their pockets for for some cash um, to, to bring to the situation. And I think he's going to have a lot more support from people going all in on on the hire. Zach Selman, I think, did a really good job in this hire, and he's a guy. It's really no no secret. He's a guy that's this that's not probably going to stay at Mississippi State forever. He's going to stay for a little while. And once he proves he, he can do a good job, then he is going to go to a bigger program. That makes sense. He's a talented guy. Um, this appears to be a hire he wanted to make sure he got right so he could do that. And to me, it's encouraging that um, he, he see, just seems like a guy who gets it. He knows how to fundraise. He did that at Oklahoma, one of the biggest brands in football. And uh, he's a smart guy. And I would not be surprised if this really works – um, that they are a package deal somewhere down the road, wherever they go, whether it be back to Oklahoma, to another school, I don't know. But keep an eye out on that in the future for those two to both go together. Um, so I think I think those are some reasons why it works. Some of the causes for concern. Um, I think the, the, the easiest one is to think about Jeff Lebby's association with his father-in-law, Art Bryles. I mean, I think that one's just kind of a given that that makes – that makes sense. You don't really want um, you don't don't want browse around the program. Uh, I think that one's kind of an easy one and kind of a gimme. I think that the next reason why it is a concern is and he's just he's never been a head coach before, and there is a part in whether you are if you've ever been promoted in a job, you've ever you ever you know think of the role you were in that you've done well for a long time. You kind of know how it works. You become almost an expert in that field, if you, you could say. But then you get promoted, and now you're the CEO over other people, over the person that used to have your job. And you can't just fixate on the one thing you were, you were good at that you mastered. Now you have to do all these other things. You have to have administration. You've got to have these difficult conversations. And it really starts to prove if you're good at something uh, or you're not. 
can Jeff Levy do that? Because, of course, we've seen many people, I mean, many, many, many people that have been a good coordinator, but when they're the head person in charge, they just can't do it. That's a difficult thing. Mike Leach talked about that, how, you know, he's an offensive guy, but he said a lot of people, even if they're offensive guys or defensive guys, when they get promoted to head coach, they just say, well, I'll just let somebody else deal with the offense or I'll let somebody else deal with the defense. And they go back, but that was the one thing they were really good at. So why wouldn't you still try to manage some of those things? Can he do that? Can he be the guy on the, as the sole recruiter? I think that's the first thing. The second thing is – the defenses were really bad at, at Oklahoma, and but like the part of that that's unknown is he he was the offensive coordinator. It wasn't his job to coach defense. So what is that going to mean? I think my concern is is there a certain level of um, is he comfortable with his defense giving up thirty points a game or thirty five points a game because he believes he can score fifty a game. I think that's a problem in the SEC. You, you have to – you cannot have a defense that's like that. Um, and so I, I wonder uh, – I wonder – shout out to Kanye Kanye West. I wonder uh, what it's going to mean for uh, for the defense. Can he hold um, – can, can he cre- get a defense coordinator that is able to knock some of those things out and to really take care of him? Because, again, in the SEC, you just have to have it. And let's face it, from a, from a state of Mississippi standpoint – um, Ole Miss is on the up and up. Ole Miss, again, wins 10 games in a season, might might win 11. Um, their offense has looked incredible. Um, you know, defense has, has seen better days. But, like, I guess what I'm saying is that the, 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 the um, it seems as if Ole Miss is rising and, Ole, and Mississippi State has got to figure out a way to rise with them, rise above them. Um, and not be left back in the dust. Ole Miss, say say what you will, um, but they have they've done an incredible job with Lane Kiffin. And remember, Lane Kiffin wasn't exactly uh, a give me for sure either. People didn't know if he could coach at a Power Five coming from FAU, even though he had a, did a good job there. Could he do the same? Could he pull it off at an SEC school? And he certainly has done that. So those are some questions. Uh, but I would love to hear from any of you. Tell me, tell me both sides. I know we're real quick just to point out why we think something's going to work or, or why we think it's just this is the worst hire ever. Um, let's give some reasons for both. If you, can, if you can be objective, can you tell me a reason why you think this hire can work, why it makes sense, and in addition to that, a reason why it might not work. And give me your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. This is an exciting time for Mississippi State. Again, they had to have something happen, had to have some things uh, some excitement around the program. I think they've done that. We'll see how it goes with the transfer portal and everything else. Um, but overall, I think it's a good time to be a Mississippi State fan. They, they have dealt with a really, really difficult difficult couple of years. Well, difficult lifetime, let's just be honest. It's not easy being a Mississippi State fan. But it, it, it is important to look at what the last um, 12 months have been like. And it seems as if this is some encouragement. But we will see how things go. It is always exciting. And I appreciate you for listening. Again, my name is Landon, and this has been the My Dogs Are Barking podcast.